Hi folks, welcome to Skywatch Media News. This is the final week of July 2017. For many years, the U.S. government has been conducting controversial and highly speculative experiments that are deemed to be detrimental to the health and well-being of its citizens. I have discussed in previous videos how chemtrails, also known as stratospheric aerosol geoengineering, are polluting our sky with substances that are considered to be toxic. Now, what we have been subjected to in the way of an explanation by meteorologists as to the nature of chemtrails is that they are just normal exhaust or water vapor left in the wake of a moving aircraft. But what they fail to explain is that there is a big difference between a trail left behind by a commercial jet and the trails created by a SAG aircraft. When a jet airplane flies at a certain altitude, a visible trail or streaks of condensed water vapors sometimes form in the wake of the aircraft, hence the name contrail. This is a normal phenomenon and usually it dissipates within a few seconds. But what is observed behind a SAG aircraft is entirely different. What you see are thick white lines that linger for several hours. The upper atmosphere is intentionally sprayed, most often in a grid type pattern, for thorough coverage. The trails eventually appear as clouds, or what we call chemtrails. Early mornings on clear sunny days are the primary qualifications for this biological attack. These particles then quietly, without notice, fall to the ground where they enter our soil, our water, and our respiratory systems. Reputable scientists have been diligently testing our soil, and the results are alarming. Aluminum, barium, and other elements were found to be thousands of times higher than normal levels. The high levels lead to very irregular or very acidic pH levels in the soil, which can be deadly to ecological life systems. Peer-reviewed scientific studies have concluded bioavailable aluminum being found in large quantities in our rainwater worldwide. And this is extremely harmful to our ecological flora and thus the ecosystem. Like I said, the aerosol spraying of our atmosphere is very controversial because we do not know reason why they are doing this. There has been a great deal of speculation on the reasons, ranging from weather warfare through manipulation of our weather patterns to the concealment of an incoming rogue planet or a second sun. But whatever the reason may be, it appears to be having a profound effect on the inhabitants of this planet. There are some experiments that have gone on in secret for years. One such experiment, which has been documented to be authentic, took place in September of 1950 and was conducted on the unsuspecting residents of San Francisco. The purpose of the test was to see if the spraying of an artificial fog laced with bacterial components could be used to simulate a germ warfare attack. In this experiment, a Navy vessel used giant hoses to spray two kinds of bacterial agents into the fog of San Francisco, where it would go unnoticed. The test indicated that a successful biological attack could be launched from sea, as nearly all of the 800,000 residents of the city at that time were exposed to the cloud at a normal breathing rate. In this instant, the residents inhaled 5,000 or more particles of the bacterial agents per minute during the several hours that the agents remained airborne. 
In 2005, the FDA was compelled to admit that the same bacterial agents used in the San Francisco experiment can cause serious life-threatening illness in patients with compromised immune systems. The bacteria has shown up in several other Bay Area health crises since the 1950s, leading to some speculation that the original spraying could have established a new microbial population in the area. Over the next 20 years, the military would conduct 239 germ warfare tests over populated areas, including a large-scale release of bacteria in the New York City subway system, on the Pennsylvania Turnpike, and in national airports just outside Washington, D.C. So it appears that the human race is being hit from opposite ends of the spectrum. On one end, there are dangerous projects that are concocted by man to have dominion over our environment in a manner which is harmful to our health and counterproductive to the ecosystem. On the other end, there are powerful forces in nature which are affecting our very existence on this planet. Because events are happening so quickly, it is imperative that we stay on top of important stories which will provide some insight into events which have the potential to severely affect our way of life. The events are very broad, but they are consequential. So let's begin with the latest developments from the Yellowstone Caldera. I believe it is especially important to understand what is taking place here lately because it may be more serious than what any of us are being led to believe from this potentially dangerous region. Scientists have recently indicated that our planet is in a season of volcanic eruption. According to their observations, we now have a 10% chance of seeing a major eruption that will devastate the planet in our lifetime. Now, that may not seem like a high percentage if you're concerned about cataclysmic events, but over the past couple of weeks, the Earth has been hit by a series of earthquake swarms that have raised a red flag for a number of scientists. According to Volcano Discovery, there are some 38 volcanoes that are currently erupting around the globe, where the eruptions continue to escalate and where the activity has gotten progressively worse. The spike in global seismic activity is unlike anything witnessed in ages. And this is why the activity at Yellowstone is so incredibly alarming. It would be exceedingly difficult to overstate the potential danger that Yellowstone poses to the United States. Other than an extremely large asteroid or meteor, it is hard to imagine any natural disaster that would pose a greater threat. Here are some things that you should be aware of with respect to the Yellowstone Caldera. It sits on top of North America's largest volcanic field. 400 miles under the Earth's surface is a magma hotspot that reaches up to just 30 miles below ground level before spreading out over an area of 300 miles across three states. Over all this sits a volcano with its catastrophic potential. It could blast 240 cubic miles of ash, rocks, and lava into the atmosphere, rendering about two-thirds of the nation uninhabitable, according to some estimates, and plunge the world into a nuclear winter. Everything within a 100-mile radius of the volcano would be immediately destroyed. Further away from the epicenter, volcanic ash would rain down for weeks. In fact, it has been estimated that a full-blown eruption would dump a layer of volcanic ash that is at least 10 feet deep, up to 1,000 miles away from the epicenter. Food production in America would be almost totally wiped out, and the volcanic winter, winter that would result from a Yellowstone eruption would dramatically cool the planet. So there are certainly many reasons to be concerned that something strange is going on at Yellowstone at this time. 
Although the chance of this happening lies at 10% in our lifetime, the threat level of such an event on our survival far outpaces that of asteroids, nuclear war, earthquakes, and climate change all combined. The far-reaching planetary effects of the magnitude of this event combined with the financial and political instability of any individual country affected by this event pose the highest associated risk of any other known disaster. Simply stating, the world is not prepared for this. If we journey back into the annals of time, we get a much clearer picture of the devastating effects of volcanic eruptions that have the potential to do real harm to our planet. The eruption of Tambora on Zimbabwe, Indonesia, killed well over 100,000 people. But ash clouds meant that there was no summer the following year, and it was one of the most important climatic and socially repercussive events of the last millennium. The earlier Icelandic event killed close to 10,000 instantly, but the long-term effects wiped out 25% of the population and were felt across the planet. A famine in Egypt reduced the population by one-sixth. 25,000 died in the UK from breathing problems, and there was worldwide extreme weather. Similar events today would be much more catastrophic due to population concerns, lack of sufficient food commodities, a dramatic cutback in world travel, and the reliance on technology. According to scientific research of volcanic activity over the last 300 years, we are currently in a volcano season. Simply stated, we are in a period of dramatically increased activity. What's happening at Yellowstone uh, with numerous earthquake swarms in a very short time frame is worrisome not only to the scientists who monitor its activity on a daily basis, but also to the public in general. To say that volcanic activity has seen a huge uptick is certainly an understatement. But Yellowstone Caldera, as potentially dangerous as it is, is not our only concern. Unusual seismic activity is happening now at the Catlin subglacial volcano in Iceland. One of the world's strongest volcanoes, which is situated below the ice cap, has seen an unusual series of 38 quakes in a span of just a couple of days, beginning on July 26, including the largest quake to hit the region since 1977. What's even more unusual about these quakes is that they have apparently released a significant amount of hydrogen sulfide into the glacial rivers that carry meltwater from the volcano. This could be a troubling sign of what could inevitably happen as this volcano continues to build up pressure. If it were to violently erupt, it could have a profound effect on the glaciers of Iceland, and we all know what that could lead to. But there is even more bad news from this region, as something strange is going on here. The largest seismic swarm in years has hit the Ragians Peninsula, where more than 500 quakes have been registered in a 24-hour period. There is a great deal of concern surrounding the latest events from this area because the quakes took place in the region where the uh, tectonic plates meet. So clearly something unusual and very discerning is happening here. Not far away in Greenland, mysterious steamers are rising from below a glacier in what is being reported as an unprecedented event. Something is going on here. There is heat coming from below, and this too is an ominous sign. The plumes of heat were photographed on July 11th, clearly showing that their origin is from below the ice. If this phenomenon is coming from a source of geothermal energy far below the surface, then this could explain the enhanced ice flow and the subglacial melting that is taking place from this polar region. 
Signs of change are now all around us. They are coming from below the earth, from the sea, and they are also coming from the sky. The barrage of earth and climate events continue to escalate worldwide despite the lack of acknowledgement from the cable news networks. On July 19th, the sea suddenly rose on the Caribbean coast of Colombia, pushing a wave of water on shore. Prior to the mysterious tsunami event, the sea receded more than 300 feet before the large wave inundated the shoreline. Investigators indicated that the strange wave was not associated with any seismic or tectonic activity and that it was not associated with any passing tropical cyclones. So then, what could have caused this anomalous event to happen so suddenly? For the first time in four decades, eight separate active cyclones were captured by satellite over the North Pacific Ocean. The last time that an event of this magnitude occurred was way back in 1974, making this event one of the most impressive on any scale. In Croatia, an anomalous event from the sky occurred. An enormous end of July hailstorm dropped tons of ice on the roads of Istria. The temperature dropped from 35 degrees Celsius to an astonishing 10 degrees in a matter of minutes. Check it out. One day earlier, in Gratomer, Italy, a massive hailstorm dumped tennis ball size hail on this coastal region, covering the city in 10 to 15 centimeters of ice in this extremely rare event. Take a look. I mentioned at the onset of this presentation that the United States government has been actively involved in biological tests and experiments on its own citizens, and they've been doing it since the 1950s. They have conducted these tests with little regard for human health and well-being. But the U.S. is not alone in their ill-conceived endeavors. It appears that Japan is a co-conspirator in this regard. It looks like the Japanese company TEPCO is on the verge of dumping 777,000 tons of radioactive waste into the ocean from the Fukushima nuclear plant, where the world's worst nuclear disaster since Chernobyl took place back in 2011. So what this will mean is that vast amounts of the toxin tritium will be released into the ocean. Now, one can only imagine what effects this will have on ocean habitat. TEPCO claims that it poses little risk to human health, unless, of course, it is ingested in large amounts, which could ultimately be the outcome if sea life becomes infected as a result of the dumping of this toxic water. Certainly, the releasing of this toxin into the sea will create yet another round of rumors on how the Japanese authorities are more concerned about the disposal of the toxin rather than the ramifications of what it will do to the environment and to sea life in general. 
So the picture is becoming clearer every day. This planet and all that dwells therein is hanging in the balance. The human race is its own worst enemy. We as stewards of the planet have failed in our promise to keep the world safe for future generations. Our self-centered greed and our obsession with materialism is destroying the very fabric of our society. Because of our ignorance and unwillingness to change, we have brought upon ourselves the day of reckoning. There is a great wrecking ball hovering over us, quickly approaching to bring in the time of purification, as was so eloquently described by the Hopi elders in their address to the United Nations in December of 1992. So as you ponder these words of warning, you must ask yourself if these passages are as powerful today as they were back then, and whether the prophecy of purification is true to form. If you haven't yet woken up to what's happening around you, then it is not too late to begin the process of opening your mind to the reality of the world as it exists today. It is much easier to deny and refute the evidence of a changing world than it is to accept and understand that the earth is in peril and things will get much worse in the years ahead before they get better. This is the focal point. We cannot control what will ultimately happen in the short term, but we are given the freedom to make decisions that could benefit our spiritual and mental well-being in the long run. I hope you take solace in these words as I did many years ago. Remember, in order to find inner peace, we must first find communion with our surroundings and with every living thing. We are still on the journey towards truth and understanding. And so I ask those who follow these presentations to be kind unto others. Be mindful of your earthly surroundings and keep looking to the sky.